Once again, we are John Fallon, Lance Felchek, and this is the Arrow in the Head show. John, I ask the same thing every time, but I generally care. How are you doing? I'm great. Yeah? <laughs> How you doing, man? Never been better. Never been better. Nice to see you again. I like the shirt. Is that your ex or your mom or uh, who's Maria? No, I'm supporting. I got this. Uh, so I'm, I'm moving soon. Um, that's all I'll say in public. One of the places that I spent a lot of time in is this cool little local bar called Maria's. Mm. It's a it's a liquor store with a bar in back. Um, you know, it's just it's a cool little place, man. And that's uh, pretty cool, actually. And Maria's, she's like in her 80s, this old Korean woman just sits at the front. I decided since I was moving, I would buy, uh, as we'll get to it, one of their beers. And I decided that I was like, I'm going to support them with the shirt. So what are you uh, what are you drinking, buddy? I'm actually sticking. I mean, in case you guys don't know, uh, last episode we did, uh, we're doing Cane Otter. Cane Otter, Jason. So we did a Friday 13 Part 7, New Blood. Friday 13 Part 8, Jason Takes a Cruise Boat. And now today we're continuing with um, Jason Goes to Hell and uh, Jason X. So last episode, I was drinking Murphy's in the name of keeping some consistency. I'm going to have the same fucking thing. So what about you? Where are you at today? Uh, so Maria's kind of runs a, a brewery as well. I got a barrel-aged Brett Sasson, uh, just something local. Nice. Well, well cheers, my man. And cheers, cheers everybody out else. there. Let's uh, have a good time. Talk about uh, my favorite slasher, Mr. Jason Voorhees, but not my favorite entries. Well, 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 we'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> We're continuing our uh, Kane Hodder Jason saga, and this is our second half. We're doing the two-part episode. This is part two. So if you haven't seen part one, I'd, I'd go check that. Unless you don't like those movies and you care about these. If, uh, I don't care how you do it. But I prefer yeah. you to watch them both because me and John uh, went over part seven, part eight. We had uh, agreements on seven, disagreements on eight. And we're going to jump into Jason Goes to Hell. That was uh -huh. the first uh -huh. New Line entry. His New Line, if I'm correct, had yep. bought uh, the rights off Paramount. Yeah, Paramount. But but they were in the middle of getting. Uh, they got Texas Chainsaw Massacre before this, and then we know they would eventually own Jason, and then they had Freddy. So the whole thing was just a uh, really should have been the, the the first universe building, but that never happened. Surprisingly, yeah. I'll, I'll let you start with the okay. <laughs> Jason goes right. to hell. Um... Jason goes to hell is the first New Line cinema one. Um, I'll never forget the cover because it has. A mask that doesn't exist, kind of like part five. Um, it always kind of confused me. There's like a, the silver mask that doesn't yeah. have the um, X mark in it. So and it, a snake coming out of it. Yeah, yeah, the, the little that um, thing. Yeah, the parasite. Yeah, the Jason penis parasite that goes into people's mouths. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get scared, okay? Uh, the nineties were, as much as I defend it, a really weird time uh, because we were in the midst of explaining things that didn't need to be explained. So. We had, uh, you know, the next generation Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and that was saying, oh, the family actually works for the Illuminati government, and they're doing experiments on people, uh, almost like martyrs, to, to get them to be enlightened. But Freddy's dead went back yeah. in 3D, and it's like, oh, he's actually made of, of these, like, like nightmare worm demon things that cause Yeah, this, worms this. are a big thing, yeah. Yeah. And then we we bring ourselves to Jason Goes to Hell, which Jason is essentially guided by, the, like you said, this this weird parasite that jumps bodies, and that essentially the parasite is is more or less connected to the entire thing, and that his origin story even ties into the Evil Dead movies. There's a there are hints of the Necromonicon, yeah, Nec Necromonicon, the Kandarian Dagger. So this is a way to kind of explain Jason's origin as almost like a deadite. I should say, in theory, is all interesting stuff. And of course, this movie, being that it's number nine, was like, okay, we gotta do something different. And they went in a, an interesting direction. So let me start off by saying, I appreciate any movie that does something different. And I-, I oh, will... yeah, You know what, I'll cut you off, fuck that. I don't want anything different. I want the same shit 
over and over and over again. It's really simple. It's Jason. It's a bunch of dumbass teenagers or young adults or whatever the fuck you want to call them. They're horny. He's hungry for killing. They come to the camp. He kills them. Now, you could take him outside the camp. I'm okay with that. But kids, Jason, get whacked, tit shot, ass shot too. Put the dudes in there too for, for, for the ladies and everybody else. I wanted you to feel me. Ladies, 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 ladies. I don't give two fucks. Nudity, gore, Jason, dumbass kids. That's all I need. I agree. I, Jason I goes to hell, although gave me some elements, little pepper here, pepper there. Deviated, I just hijacked your fucking combo, by the way. Way too far. Friday 13 is, is you know, meat and potatoes. It's simple. At the fucking Vori's house, a magic knife, and you know, he's a worm that fucking goes, you know, it's Nightmare on the Hidden Street, you know, that's that's what that movie is, you know, it ripped off another New Line movie, The Hidden. The Hidden, yeah. A great fucking movie, by the McLa way. Uh, McLaughlin, yeah, yeah, Kyle McLaughlin. Yeah, yeah, and Michael Nouri, the great, great Michael Nouri, who basically in my book made two movies, Flashdance and The Hidden, and then poof, he just, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he transcended. But I apologize, Lance, I no, was no. being rude. I hijacked. I'm just very animated about this one. So. I, I was going to get to essentially what you just said. I'm just trying to be as diplomatic as possible because... Nah, fuck that. Life's too short, bro. I know, but yeah. So what I was going to basically get to, uh, and I was just taking a long time to be nice, I appreciate when people do stuff. I really, really do. And, and I always encourage it because in the end, I would take it over most. The difference is, is what you said, which I'm going to say my own way, is that Jason Voorhees is my... ACDC. It's my Leonard Skinner, meaning that like make the same shit over and over and just give me some rock and roll. Like I'm not going to you for cut and paste lyrics. I'm not going to you to, uh, you know, reinvent the wheel. I want the same shit over and over. It's, it's my comfort food. That's why this is my favorite slasher out of all of them, because it's not as inventive as Freddy Krueger. It's not as analytic as Texas Chainsaw Massacre. God damn, is it just fun. It's fun. I, I put it, I, I, sometimes I'm going to sleep. I'll put like a Friday 13 them and not off you know like just just slowly fall asleep in dreamland because I, awesome. I, I i this makes me happy and so my big issue what i was going to tie into is that this try to be unique and god bless because i do appreciate that but it's not the right character i want what you want which is exactly i want nudity i want some tits i want some mass i want some bush and i think girls should get some abs some fucking man butt uh everybody should get pretty good gore fun effects and a tight pace that's all i want and this could have been that it could have even with the stupid explanations, because again, I, I don't even mind the Thorn Halloween movies because they, they get so dumb, it makes me happy. Like again, I'm not saying they're <laughs> my favorite, but like movies can get to a level of dumb where it's almost, I'm almost high. I'm like, <laughs> okay, whatever. And this could have been it if it just had Jason the entire time. Really, all they need to do is if you want to go this weird route where there's a worm, which I don't like, but whatever, I, I you know, I, I got enough problems in life to, to really fight this. But instead of Jason being in the mirror and the guy being the main character. Why not yeah. Jason be the fucking character? And if he looks in the mirror, it's some guy. Then I could, yeah. at least I could be like, okay, well, it's Jason enough. It's like uh, number yeah. five, and uh, a new beginning. Like where that's not Jason, it's Roy, the paramedic. Yeah. But for the whole movie, it's basically Jason. It's fucking busting through doors. I'll at least pretend it's Jason because I still get cool kills and whatever. This yeah. is like, I've, I see him for what, six seconds? Yeah. You know, it's like- the opening it's like, and the ending, that's it. Yeah. And these have, you know, I would argue the kills are actually pretty aggressive. Like New Line yeah. got away with it. I didn't get Jason killing, man. There's that awesome tense scene where yeah. it's like it's like a big nudity scene. It's it's really intense. Girls get cut up the middle. Yeah, and then you see the uh, the boyfriend's face through the the wound. Like ah, you know, that was kill. fucking. That was yeah. You know, bravo. You know, it's funny because Kane, poor Kane, man. You know, gave his best performances in my opinion in part seven and part eight, but both of them had no gore. And then finally he gets gore with Jason Goes to Hell and gets gore in Jason X. But I don't know, the, the performance is not as good. Well, part nine doesn't give him as much room to perform. He gets like 10, part 10 minutes. Ten, part 10 will get there when we get there. But so it's a bit of a shame. Look, I'll say this about Jason Goes to Hell. The setup, we're all like the usual tropes. The girl shows up and it's, uh, and I forgot her name. So guys, sue me, I'm not good with names either. So yeah. we're both two guys not good with names. You know, she gets there, all the tropes, the usual, you know, she goes in the cabin alone, she takes a shower, 
She has a boob shot, all the cliches, and then boom, it's a setup to trap Jason. I thought it was genius. The tent scene kill was great. There's a couple of Sam Peckinpah-ish type slow motion heavy shootouts. And uh, the waitress with the shotgun, probably my favorite next to Duke, which I'm sure you'll yeah, I talk liked about. Yeah, yeah. The, the man, the myth, the Duke, the waitress with the shotgun, man. It's just badass all around. So th there's some good elements and some good kills, but as a whole, not a whole, a whole, uh, it, it didn't work for me as a Friday 13 movie. Maybe if I forget it's a Friday 13 movie and it's something else, okay, it's all right. It's all right, good kills, good pace. But, you know, at the end, the knife and all the light show. And I'm like, what am I? This is more Nightmare on Elm Street. Like the, the, the magic, you know, there's kind of like, what? I'm supposed to believe that all along, because that's the whole point. He was a snake body hopping all along. And that's how they explain that he keeps going for so long. I don't buy it, man. Look, part two, three, four. He's just a resilient, um, mentally challenged gentleman who's been raised in the woods. Part five, well, it's not him. Part six, seven, eight, he's a zombie. So now part nine, no guys, he's a worm. Man, fuck you. Hey, fuck you. The 90s were explaining things for no reason. That's a big thing. But can I ask you, what do you think? Because I go back and forth, because his look changes, obviously, each movie. And I, I think that's cool. Oh, yeah. I, part of Jason is, is always seeing what they do next. But his elf and Titus look in this has always been kind of odd to me. And me again, too. maybe in practice and in execution, it could have been better, but they don't ever, like he's only in it for four minutes or 10 minutes, whatever, I can yeah. change the number. But even then, he, he, what would you call it? For, for me, I call it a fucked up fucking head. Oh, it looks, I, 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 it looks to me like Elf and Titus. Like this is David Lynch's Elephant that is. Man. What is that? It's, a, it's like a disorder. Are they going I, for that? I mean. I think it could have been interesting. I just, I'm always curious. Cause like, I don't love it, but maybe it's just cause I never, he didn't use it, you know? I don't know. Hmm. No, Kane, look, Kane is great, but I can't remember his performance, to be honest, because he's hardly in it. You don't you don't feel the presence of Kane's Jason like you did in part seven or even part eight. Pretty much the best fucking thing in the movie, really, let's face it. But I only remember his performance in, in part nine because they didn't really give him the time to have a performance. It's not yeah. about Jason. The one guy yeah. should be. It's not about. Um, I will say it's directed well. And we both agree, like. I, something that this movie did well that I, I wish others would take from it, which is uh, they weren't teens. They were kind of like young adults. They weren't like, yeah. I mean, you know, and that's the thing is I don't think Jason only needs to kill teens. He, he just needs to kill whoever is in his vicinity. Yeah, well, so. he's like a bear. You know, if you go in the mountains and hike, which I do a lot, by the way, and you happen to walk on a bear's territory and there's a mother with cubs, you're fucked. They don't give a fuck who you are. You're on my turf, I got kids, I'm gonna fuck you up. That's bear mentality. Jason's the same way, for the most part, up until part eight, really, so seven movies, he's at the fucking camp chilling. Yeah? He's, he's not bothering nobody, he's not going out. Let me go outside the camp and fuck people up. Nah, man, he's just chilling, either at the bottom of a lake, or, you know, wherever the fuck he is, yeah? Where he waits, yeah. And they keep coming but on his fucking turf. Actually, now that we get into it, in the, in the earlier installments, you know, Camp Crystal Lake, Camp Blood, it's cursed. There's, there's that old dude, you know, it's cursed, go away. You're like, okay, dude, if I'm if I'm going somewhere and some old dude at a gas station comes to me, curse, it's cursed, don't go. And I and then there's a history to the place. I ain't going. Okay. It, no, dude, roger that. Okay. They go anyway. So they get what they deserve. I wasn't going to Cabrini Green in high school because uh, I knew it was violent. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're like, oh, it's dangerous. I'm not like, ah, I get my backpack and my friends. It's like, oh, okay, don't go there. Don't go, don't even drive near it, you know? So, I mean, they all deserve it, but we've talked about this. We we root for Jason. Like, these kids deserve to die because he's not really doing anything wrong. I mean, he is technically, but he's not really traversing out. Besides no. going to my Manhattan, and really, it's just because they- And that was by up. accident. Yeah, 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 really, just, yeah, it's just- uh, uh, a comical mishap of errors, but like yeah. he doesn't naturally traverse out of his landscape. No, so. he, yeah. he kills to you fucking went on his lawn. Like I, I said in the last episode, you know, he's get off my lawn, boy. You know, he's that guy, man. Fuck off. Leave me alone, man. Let me think of my mama, play with myself and leave me alone. But no, you can't give him that. So you know what? They get what they deserve. Fuck no, absolutely. Well, uh, to tie it in though, movie has elements that I like and we like we didn't talk about, but Duke, is a cool character. Duke. Um, tying wow. into the, the the mythical aspect, I, because we don't like it, it's not my thing, but I will step back and say that I can't argue that he's a, a bad written character because 
I like the fact he's that he's awesome, a, man. A guy says chasing Jason that he's his entire existence is like trying to find him. I, I mean, it could, he should have partnered up with Jarvis and Tina, but I mean, whatever. The, 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 there's a guy that's you know, with a cowboy hat that's just trying to get him, and like you know, Stephen Williams, his name, uh, yeah, the actor. Yeah. What's yeah. he? What else is he from? I don't know him well. I have no idea. No, he's, he's the Duke. Duke to me. He'll always he's be the Duke. Duke. Yeah. So uh, it's a good his voice and his demeanor and uh, yeah. It's kind of a hard ass, you know? I would watch a spinoff with that guy. Just Duke hunting yeah. like supernatural entities, you know? that That's a show. And if it ever gets made, you know, give me money. Yeah. Yeah. But that's a show. I would watch that show. So so it's funny, you know, we're talking about Jason Goes Hell just to bring it to, to a close. And what are we bringing up? We're bringing up the Duke. We're bringing up... The, the gore is... As, 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 the gore, the gore as, is yeah. great. I'll, I'll say it, you know, nice tit shot, you know, in the, that tent, you know, before they get... Abuse yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. She's she looks great. Good for her. God bless. Yeah. But yeah, we're not talking much about Jason, now, are we? That's not a Jason movie. That's the that, that's the problem. Yeah. It could have been the hidden uh, part two. Yeah, yeah. Which was better than, I mean, Jason goes to hell. Is I don't know if you have you seen the hidden. I mean, it's been years. It's been years. I've I saw, seen it. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the hidden, but I mean, I saw it at the music box, maybe uh, ten years ago. Okay. He it's loves a, heavy metal, yeah, he loves hot 80s. cars, yeah, and yeah. he loves hot chicks. To the point he becomes one at some point, he possesses a stripper. But they made a sequel to it. A low rent, yeah. no action sequel. That's horrible. Like, uh, it doesn't exist in my world. But Jason Goes to Hell with some, not, not minor tweaks, actually major tweaks. Could have been a proper sequel to uh, The Hidden. But anyways, it's not a horrible film. No, no. It's a movie that I will revisit again down the road I, I always do because these movies i'm kind of like i like but i don't like i always go back to them well, you gr you grow I, i've been trying to yeah some things were more important are less important you find new ways i mean that's what i love about yeah. movies i watch the same i movies i love you know it's like i notice things and no i mean i used to shit on this a lot more and now i'm like i don't like this jason but i can admit now something i didn't admit like 10 15 years ago which is as if i remove jason it's actually not bad it's just the one thing i care about is the one thing that I think they, they don't do well. You know? Actually, before we move on, I got to say this. At some point when movies came out, they would release a companion magazine That's about cool. the movie. So I have the Jason Goes to Hell. They had one for Freddy's dad. I have the Jason Goes to Hell one. I actually have the Rocky IV one, Rambo II, but whatever. I still have the Jason Goes to Hell official companion piece magazine that got released when the film got released. Nice, nice. That's it. I just wanted to flaunt. Yeah, I don't have I... it to show, but... I mean, it really is always a, a cool little thing, man. I, I miss stuff like that. Now the digital age, it's all gone. Elephant Man Jason. <laughs> Elephant Man Jason, why not? Which brings us to the last entry of the New Line Cinema, Kane Hodder era, which is Jason X. So, John, I'll let you uh, jump off from here. You know, when you say it that way, it's a bit sad, you know? I'm reminiscing, Kane, yeah. The best Jason, in my useless opinion, of course. No, it's a fact. It's a fact. Yeah. Well, you know, some people might disagree. Yeah, people are stupid. That's true. Some people are really fucking stupid. Think of how stupid the average person is, and then realize half of them are stupider than that. Anyways, uh, Jason X. Jason in space. Uh, space is usually where franchises go to die, as we know. I read the Jason X script years before it um, got made, and I really enjoyed it. And I think the film, even with it, I'm going to burp and you're going to leave it on camera, aren't I? Aren't you? It depends how funny it is. I don't know. I'll go for it. Yeah. Um, even with its uh, budget limitations, it still does the job. What I like about Jason X a lot, yeah, it's in space. And there's spacey shit that comes with it. But really, if you really look at it, as opposed to Jason Goes to Hell, it does exactly what a Friday 13 is supposed to do. You get your stock characters. But on top of that, you get Marines. You get sexually uh, curious cyborg. is probably one of my favorite characters in in, in the film. Uh, you get David Cronenberg. Uh, you get great kills. The I always love the uh, VR throwback scene. I seen the movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, you want a beer? Or do you want to smoke some pot? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Although it's hilarious in Jason X in Part Seven, it was kind of like, what the fuck? That's pretty rough. Actually, just to go back to part seven, because I just remember this and I didn't say it in the last episode. Kane Otter, when they were doing that seat, the bag was heavier than he thought it was going to be. So take after take after take, he started getting frustrated. 
So finally, he fucking lifted it and bang and banged it. The last take is the take they used in, in the uh, finished uh, film. Yeah, so I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it worked, you know, e even though the, the kids I didn't really care for. I'm not sure if it's a dialogue or the performances or both, but they were more uh, annoying than usual. They were less engaging than usual. If you look at the kids in uh, actually part seven or part four, you know, even though they're stock characters, you kind of like them. I wouldn't say root for them, but you're not annoyed by them. But Peter Mensa, who played Sergeant Brodsky. Yeah, it's a famous like British actor, isn't he? Or English, I don't know which the proper term. Peter, yeah, yeah. Mensa, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was like my favorite character in the movie with the cyborg. He was a badass, he was a hard ass. He has a great line with Jason. And I was expecting like, for Jason and him to have a big mano a mano, you know, but he wound up having it with the cyborg. He, Jason stabs him and Broski, he's such a hard ass, he goes, some, I paraphrase, oh, it's gonna take more than a little prick to put this old dog down or some shit like that. Yes, so then Jason stabs him again and he's like, oh, yeah, that ought to do it. So I thought it was, you know, so some funny dialogue, some funny lines, good action scenes. You got what, uh, Robo Jason, Uber Jason. Uber Jason, yeah, yeah. Um, Even though they didn't do as much as they could have done with that concept. It's right. still fucking cool as fuck. Yeah, money, of course. Uh, directed by James Isaac, who did uh, the really fun, uh, the horror show, which I always liked. So no, I, dude, it's... It's Jason in space, and it works. Uh, Kane wasn't as prominent, didn't have as much presence, I felt, as part seven and part eight and part nine when he was in there. He had hair, though. Didn't he have hair, Jason, in that one? He did. What is that noise? Neighbors they upstairs. Kid? What are they, fucking? And I want to know what the hell they're doing. Oh, ah! oh I love to feel your body all around oh! me. I, so I, I've always loved this movie. I'll be honest. This is the first one I saw in theaters. So I know yeah. there, there is a, I mean, that's why I look so goddamn young and pretty, you know? <laughs> <laughs> but Touché. I remember I saw this in Country Club Hills in the South Suburbs. And I remember it was just such a fun experience. I remember laughing, cheering, yada, yada, yada. The, but the one thing that I've always had issues with is I, I, this is like my least favorite look because he's basically human. And yeah, so he's not even bald. He's like a full head of hair. So it's hmm. it's it's a Jason always looked a little off to me in terms of like um, yeah there is something off in terms of uh, his and like, I they're going for some different but like man I, I I don't I prefer zombie Jason we've been over this we agree yeah. uh, especially well, he's supposed to be zombie Jason yeah but he looks no? human I mean yeah I guess technically he is yeah but he looks human he looks completely and it's like ah man and for, especially hair Jason's weird. I've always loved this. I really, I think they hate it out of necessity instead of actually watching the movie because not to piggyback on your exact thoughts, but it gives me exactly what I wanted, which, you know, not to knock on part nine, but it's like this almost looked at part nine goes, no, let's just, let's just get the basics, but in space. Oh, yeah. exactly. And, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to fight something, which is an unpopular opinion. And, and, and this might surprise people. It's not, I'm being sarcastic. I like Hellraiser in space, even though I know there's a lot of crazy rewrites on yeah, that. Actually, it had its moments. Leprechaun space is basically a stoner movie. Jason space it played the exact card it should have, which is just kills that are science fiction. -esque. The, the probably the best kill in the series comes from this movie, which is when he takes the woman's head, yeah. sticks it in the freeze and bashes it on the thing. The and, smash her head, yeah. And that's a Kane performance that like I really like, or yeah. knocking the guy in the screw and then he like goes down. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I always want to fight people because everybody loves part six and rightfully so because it's a, it's a masterpiece. Um, but I would say that this is the only one besides part six that kind of takes itself a little less serious. And it has a little more of a nod to itself. As part six that we talked about, it, it's almost winking at its own mythology. This does the same thing. Of course, I would argue it probably goes a little too far. Kane is serious. He plays a serious, but they, you know, the, there's an amazing scene where the the teacher is like, <laughs> he just won his machete back. We're all yeah. good. And then he yeah. fucking gets killed. Yeah. Guys, it's okay. He just wanted his machete back. I've done some research. Todd Farmer wrote a darker script that I think the lasting effects of Scream being so meta seeped into this and that from what I've read, Cunningham uh, was a lot more hands-on than should have been. was very like, well, I want this different, this different. Too many cooks yeah, in the kitchen. Yeah, too many cooks, yeah. Um, but overall, I, I, really my big complaint is that a low-budget film from the 80s and even the early 90s has a charm. And it, it, it's a charm that it, 
of a look. Whereas this has that sort of Australian Canadian TV look. And I'm not saying the Americans didn't do it too, but like my, I grew up, my dad was watching like Farscape and, and Andromeda and shit like that. And so this has that like Doctor Who, Stargate. Whereas yeah. I know that all the, the movies we just talked about, the seven, eight, nine, they're all cheap too, but they look better. Yeah, but they weren't sci-fi. They weren't in space. It's the woods and a cabin. The DP and how they how they lit shit. I mean, it's too bright. I think even Todd Farmer said like he imagined this is going to be his aliens in space, yeah. and it ends up being uh, you know just Doctor Who. It is. Uh, I agree. Yeah, too colorful, too yeah, bright, too bright, and too cheap looking. Yeah, it is too cheap looking. But we agree though. They kept to the basics: uh, kills, yeah. nudity, and it was a fast pace. And I'm all and I'm about that. I mean, this to me is more of a stoner entry than the previous ones. Even though we could both argue that they're all stoner entries, um, but this. This is fun. I don't get it. Like, if people hate Jason X, it's like, tell me about the masterpiece that is part three. Like, that's stupid too, but it's fun. Like, what? I, I don't know. I just feel like this gets a bad rep for no reason. It's like, oh, it's dumb. It's like, they're all dumb. That's why these are good. Oh, yeah, of course. They are. I've loved this since I thought in 2002. And I think it, you you talked about this uh, maybe off camera, but it, this was one that, that had a lot of, not only interference, but it was delayed a couple of years. It was delayed, yeah. It's, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to talk out of my ass. I don't remember the details, but it was shelved. So yeah. it was finished, but it was shelved and it, it didn't get released for, for a while. Todd Farmer, the, the guy, the gentleman that, that wrote the script, is also in the film. He plays one of the Marines. He gets his head cut off. And I, I wrote a film in 2014, I think it was, called uh, American Muscle, which I co-starred in. And Todd played the villain. And when I found out he still had his head from Jason X, oh, well, nice. I changed his death scene and had his you know head cut off. Yeah, th th that's it. So that was kind of cool. We had a bit of uh, Jason X in, in our film at the time. And Todd's that's a great. great guy, stand-up guy. Just to go back to Kane, that's why... Kane wasn't in Freddy vs. Jason and Kane wasn't in the remake is the the, the creatives behind uh, the films and it shows when you watch the films wanted a different kind of Jason. Yes, they didn't want the and, you know, Freddy vs. Jason, he does come across as a big mopey expressive eyes that that's what the director had yeah. said when he didn't cast Kane. i wanted an frankenstein yeah. but frankenstein frankenstein yeah. with, with uh expressive eyes i mean yeah I, I i enjoy that movie per se but i never i i will argue this that is more michael myers than it is jason Voorhees in that role i don't even see michael myers but it's, it's slow methodic not no it's not jason it's not no. kane's jason it's not my jason um actually funnily enough little anecdote and then i'll finish my thought the guy that played Jason in Freddy vs. Jason, uh, Ken Kurtzinger. It's in part eight, right? Played the guy that got slammed into, in a diner against in the, the mirror. mirror in part eight. Son of a bitch. <laughs> he also played Jason for one stunt, I think, in part eight as well. Oh. And the remake, again, you know, he was skinny, fast, tall. Kane's Jason's like a tank. Yeah, they want a human yeah. and we want we want zombie. I exactly. want one more zombie Jason. And it's like, I don't think we're gonna get it, man. I would love I would love to see Kane back in the role, put one him more. upset and not not just me, a bunch of Fred 13 fan have been saying it for years. Put him in snow, put him in a ski resort, a bunch of horny kids go there, do their thing, be on their iPads or whatever the fuck, and Jason shows up and fucks everybody up, and that's it. It's a no-brainer. And I'm there, man. Take my money. I don't know if you remember. For a little bit, they were talking about a found footage Jason movie. Yeah, I, I'm glad they didn't do that personally. Yeah, I, I, can't, I can't stand that shit. I can't stand that. Yeah, yeah. Just stick to the yeah. basics and let's move on. And the remake kind of did that. I liked it. it. It definitely has the the best sex scene in the Friday 13 movie. But that sex scene was like softcore porn, man. It was uh, Juliana Gill. Oh, better better than me. I don't know. I was like, yeah. No, well, I'll always remember that sex scene. She's Wow, that's okay. That's a woman. Uh, Jim Isaac, the director, Noel Cunningham, and then Todd Farmer were like pitching ideas. And that Jason, I mean, there's like Jason NASCAR, Jason and Safari, some weird shit, Jason fighting LA gangs, uh, Predator 2 style. But they 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 did talk about Jason in the snow. And it's like, man, and I love Jason next, but Kane Hodder back and Jason the Snow would be I'm the in. best swan song of, of all time because everybody yeah. wants it. It's too bad that Kane didn't get to be Jason in the woods for more than one movie. How about that? Yeah. 
You yeah. know, it's like it's it's the Bond thing where it's like, man, a good Bond, even if the movie sucks, we get we got to admit that the Bond was good. And he was he was my uh, slasher Bond, so he'll always yeah. be my guy. To end it off, do you know who we have to thank for Kane being Jason? John Carl Beekler. As he worked on Rennie Harlan's Prison, which is a great film, by the way, if you've never seen it. It's really good. Viggo Mortensen's the lead before he was a star. Oh, nice. Okay. No, I, I haven't, yeah. He was so impressed with Kane. Uh, he played, like, the, the Spectre prison guy, whatever, that he pushed Paramount to hire Kane. And he pushed and pushed and pushed and finally said, all right, fuck, go ahead, take, get your guy to play Jason. If Beekler didn't push uh, CJ Graham, Graham, yeah, in part played, six uh, jason in part six would have been jason in part seven so uh mr beekler in horror heaven thank you because you gave me my favorite jason so kane hotter man yeah. uh, man a myth a legend it, i i'd cheers you but i got nothing left but um hey i got a sip you see so the cane okay thank you sir and until next time guys uh you know we always say uh, help us out subscribe like comment uh you know we're always looking for opinions and uh recommendations so yeah let us know what you think and then hopefully uh we'll meet you on the other side until next time john you got it buddy have a great one bro all right see you buddy